Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and we are here, and this is going to be week number one of the UPBA Season 4, I believe. I might have to fact check that, but we are here up against Badass Frostlass and his Indiana Tracers. I might have to fact check that as well, but uh, it will be the first time we battled him, and this is a team that I really enjoy. It has a ton of pieces that I really like using, but if I'm being honest, a lot of this team is kind of hampered by the fact that I was really middle of the road in terms of draft order, so a lot of these picks feel kind of awkward, but there's a lot on this team that I do like, and I'm really hoping that it'll all kind of work together here. This will be a little bit of an uber format so you will see that i do have the kiram black as well as an age slash that doesn't show up this week but the age slash was pretty tough this week you can see on his side he has a genesect which really messes me up especially if it's scarfed i'm kind of assuming that it's going to be kind of the more standard scarf genesect because of how difficult it is for my team to kind of manage so i'm going to be looking out for that but he does have a ton of hard counters on my team right and especially because i think a lot of the theme for this season is going to be how well my team is able to manage steel types and for my first week i get to manage one of the strongest steel types out there so we're going to try to manage that but there was a lot of things that i really expected to see right i really thought i would see the vicar come i thought the lantern was a huge possibility hell i thought wacky was super possible i'm also surprised not to see latias the team that he did bring was a lot of what i expected uh i didn't quite expect the zygarde but that combination of genesis Moltres and Mimikyu presents a ton of problems for my team and it's just kind of things that I'm gonna have to work around hopefully I can work around them but it's gonna take a bit of doing here so you guys will see that I do lead off with a Gavantula now uh, if you guys know me at all you guys will know that I hardly ever collect turn one hazards it wasn't really on my mind in this moment it was kind of a possibility for me but what I was thinking of more than anything was that this kind of allowed me to kind of pivot in and out kind of manage whatever wanted to lead kind of anti-lead a little bit this felt like it gave me the most options here and i could turn one hazards if i wanted to if i really expected the zygarde to want to come in um so I, I wanted to kind of manage things as they were here i end up uh, going for the going for the turn one web is as he reveals the u-turn now this immediately makes me think that he's scarfed right and that's kind of the set that i that i was talking about kind of being afraid of uh, this isn't the fastest Galvantula in the world, um, but uh, again, I was expecting a Scarfed G Genesect, and, and if this thing is Scarfed, then th then there's kind of a gap, so so this thing is, is, is bulkier, you see, that I was able to take the crit, I, it's an open question as to how well I would have taken that, that crit if it weren't for it, um, for that little bit of bulk, but this thing is boots, it's just kind of meant to, again, pivot in and out, be a, kind of an annoying early damage dealer to the team and um set me up for later in the game and uh i'm, I'm really expecting to see the zygarde come in but we're, we're waiting on that as i do click the sticky webs if i'm not mistaken this was kind of telegraphed i felt like i was safe enough to do this but now i'm in a position where i'm, I'm kind of looking at my own team and i'm thinking to myself i really don't know what to do here because i don't want to just stay in and and uh have this thing go down so early especially since he he can defog li later in the game he can um manage me but i also don't want to let, let this thing set up i just go for a hard bug buzz because uh if this thing does set up then i need to get damage on this and you can see and you can actually see i actually uh, forgot about this but you, but you can see that the fact that he goes uh, before me that he's that this zygarde is faster than me is kind of a a testament to how slow my galvantula is it's really not meant to outspeed much i think i might actually be modest if i'm not mistaken but um this thing is again really meant to kind of punch holes in, in the team early on and again i really didn't expect him to bring that uh strong of it that fast of a team so i thought i was pretty safe in doing that but he goes for the skill shot which puts him at plus two speed which is incredibly scary for my team but what i did do is i prevented two dragon aces which is big on its own but now i'm looking at my own team and i'm thinking oh i really don't have that much offensive pressure right because my two my two uh physically defensive mons that that, that do have rocket helmets to kind of manage the the genesect as, as it comes in and out don't have any physical moves of note i, I think i think if anything that this is a minus uh special tag nature so knockoff i'm really not expecting knockoff to do much of anything so i kind of have to rely on scald here and at the very last second i believe um it, and also forgive me because i built this team quite a decent bit before this battle was played but uh i believe this this was pretty much a game time decision as to whether or not i would pack knockoff as the kind of last move or i see wind but the Vicavolt on its own was reason enough for me to want to pack knockoff on it to kind of uh, be able to hit it at least and then kind of pivot in and out later on in the game. 
knock off boots make it kind of come in take damage and th that kind of thing but um obviously this would have been a fantastic matchup for me to pack icy wind i didn't pack icy wind i take th thousand uh thousand arrows significantly better than i would have expected i'm able to get a scald off i don't get a burn and i'm and i'm running calcs um well i i i did run calcs and i was confident enough that i, I was able to take um a, a couple of thousand arrows i could kind of stand in with this thing hopefully get a burn i was i mean a burn there would have been fantastic however um if there if he has another move that's not thousand arrows that's stronger than thousand arrows then i am in a pretty awkward position although i'm confident enough that i'll, that I'll be able to take another hit and potentially go for another scald and uh manage this, this thing from there so all these things that I'm thinking through, it's unfortunate that I have to give up the, my seismic this early. But uh, again, this is why I had double. This is why I had double uh, helmet, and this is why I also had double hazards. I, I believe my my sand slash had spikes on it, so they both kind of fill the same role. And especially in a match where I really need to, to try to get a hazards, and I really need to um, pressure the Genesect from being able to freely u click U turn having both of them was really strong here however he goes for another skill shot and he gets four hits and obviously he, he, he was running calc he knew how defensive i was he knew he kind of knew everything that uh, that was up here but he had to rely on getting four hits and he took the risk obviously it, it worked out for him but uh that was that was pretty devastating for me i not even because not even in the fact that I thought that it was going to end the game, or, or thought that I lost at this thing, even though it was an open question still as to whether or not I did, I did lose to this thing. But it was more so the question of, of man, I had this plan and it just doesn't work out, right? It, it was more just like, um, just like I guess a, a little bit of saltiness, but just more so just a little bit of, of disappointment because I really wanted my this plan to, to, to work out and it just didn't work out. Um, but like I said, I, I I kind of knew what I had to do. I, I had to take a bunch of damage on my token kiss, and and again, the name of the game really was restraining this this um this Zygarde to only one Dragon Dance because even though I didn't like it, I knew that I was going to be able to take another to, to take a thousand arrows as long as I was able to manage the Zygarde somewhat and hit it back with a with an air slash. And now I'm here against Moltres. I kind of expected this Moltres to defog, so I kind of wanted to just uh, test the waters here. But again, the fact that this thing is, is, is defogging is, is kind of screaming a, b a bunch of things about his team to me, right? Um, the Scarf Genesect, which which we already kind of su suspected, and this kind of confirms a little bit more because he definitely doesn't want um, his Genesect to have to do things on um a scarf genesect have to do things under uh, under webs and and it's kind of crystallizing some some other, some other things on the team for me but uh i really need to hit this multi it's really hard and unfortunately i have to give up my token kiss to do it but we do get one flinch and uh we can kind of take it from there we can kind of take it one flinch at a time so to speak but in this moment i am kind of expecting to have to give up my token kiss because in honesty that zygarde put me in a bad position i really don't like the positioning that my that that, that zygarde put me in but uh we're gonna try to manage it as best we can, and we're gonna try to work around that Zy that death of the Zygarde put into my team. But it's gonna be hard. It's it's absolutely gonna be hard from here. And thankfully, I did get a second crit, which did allow me to pick up a KO. Now, if I had gotten a third crit, webs would have still been up, or a third. Uh, you guys know what I mean. It would have been fantastic, but it's not the way that it works out here. But now that. My token kiss got out of that exchange unscathed. Now I'm thinking, I should probably save this thing, shouldn't I? And and I believe I would be surprised if I don't go into Sand Slash in this moment. Uh, and right, I, I remember what happens here. But um, I'm gonna try to sk stick to my initial game plan. I was I was honestly considering whether or not I should just give up my token kiss now and just try to go into Sand Slash and try to I don't know get a Super Fang off, get a get spikes up, do whatever the case may be. But this thing reveals that it's mixed with Flash Cannon, which is a fantastic, fantastic bring. Uh, and it kind of negates the whole Rocket Helmet thing. I, and so I really can't tell much about this thing. Um, I didn't even notice, but but I might, might have also gotten a, a download boost onto Special Attack, which which would have sucked if true. But I keep thinking through a bunch of my options here. And honestly, I, I really didn't feel like I had any options. I felt like I just had to give up this, this Sand Slash. And it was unfortunate because 
literally my entire plan to try to mitigate this this uh this uh Genesect just went to crap. It just went to crap, right? Uh I really thought that I had a solid plan in place, but this allows me to go into to go into um, my Placephalon and I kind of felt that this thing was wanting to go into Tentacruel, so I and, I and I also really desperately wanted to click Flame Charge as well, but I was kind of scared. I felt like if this thing was super defensive, then I had to click Psy Shock uh, to, to get two Psy Shocks off on this thing, but this thing just straight up gets O Code, which was huge. I mean, it wasn't actually huge, but it felt huge in the moment, right? Because obviously, at this point, I'm still think I'm still thinking that that, gen that the Genesect is scarfed. He could have other scarves on the team potentially. He could have things to mitigate this Placephalon, right? Uh, oh yeah, and obviously this thing is, is out here as well. But, um, but again, yeah, it 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 was a really dope moment for, for me to just get a straight up Oko, and it did reveal a decent amount about this uh this Tentacruel. And, and again, just kind of learning more, just unpeeling this onion of what his team comp is gonna look like. Uh, I stay in because I believe I ran some calcs, and he's either gonna want to set up an SD, which I really can't allow, or I believe I I calc it and I took an and I took a sneak, um, and I barely did. I I I mean that's a rough calc if I if, if I really did calc that out, but I probably I probably EV'd. I probably calc. Maybe I EV'd. I don't know, man. It was a, it was all a while ago, but point is we're here now. We took we took a shadow sneak, we prevented a sword dance, and we broke the skies, which is all the components that I really need to kind of pr progress in this game right and uh, at this point I'm, I'm running some calcs now that I know, know that it's life orbed and I know that obviously that it that it didn't get up an SD right I'm, tr I'm trying to figure some things out for myself and I realize I believe this is where I realize that uh, my togekiss can take a life orb hit even you know with with this thing being potentially really strong and, and life forward and being able to shadow sneak me. So I go in here. He should know that I'm scarfed. He should know um, everything about this toad kiss pretty much. Uh, I, I believe it's a modest toad kiss as well, if I remember correctly. But um, this does give me a chance to just get a strong hit off. Hopefully get this thing out of the way because obviously this thing is going to be an, an impediment for my uh, Kyrim in, in particular. And Kyrim is really going to be how I'm going to attempt to win this. But we pick up a flinch, and he doesn't go for the shadow sneak, which is huge. It's absolutely huge that he doesn't go for the shadow sneak because he could have gone for two shadow sneaks, prevented the whole um, flinch thing. Um, but he didn't, which again, it allows me to just click it again, get the KO, and uh, we can take it from there. So now, I don't know what to expect. Goes out into the Genesect again. And I believe, I believe at this point, uh, I, I'm going to have to see. Oh, yeah, no. So right now I'm down to just Togekiss and just um, and just Kyurem. So I have to try to get my Kyurem to, to win and deal a bunch of damage at some point. I click Air Slash. It turns out not to be Scarfed. This thing is not Scarfed. I found out after the match, it's Boots, which is insane to me. Right? Not, not insane as in it's bad team building. It's strong team building. But I just thought that Scar in my head I was so tunneled into scarfed, uh, to scarfed um, Genesect that I I couldn't believe what I just seen. And funny enough, if I'd gotten that that flinch, then it would have been a 50% roll for me to pick up the KO on a subsequent uh, air slash. And also, additionally, moreover, furthermore, this Genesect did not have extreme speed, which means that uh it couldn't hit me with with priority i would have gotten a, an air slash off on uh this this genesect and it would have come down to the last mon uh, uh on his team being the the girder which i think i i got it after the game and it turns out girder never ko's with mock punch i was out of range so even if i d does get a mock punch off I'm always able to uh, to pick up a KO there, but I think you guys know that with this kind of going, I really am in no position to be able to to KO a Garter from full. So Garter's gonna kind of be able to come in and close out the game. But 
again it blew my mind and even now when i'm playing this game i didn't even think of it being a booth's genesect i was still in the mindset of it's a scarf genesect but it just happened to be a, a really slow scarf genesect and for whatever reason my scarf togekiss managed to, to creep his scarf genesect i still end out this this game assuming that it's a scarf genesect and it wasn't until he showed me the paste after the game that I found out finally that it's a Boots Genesect because I was so tuned into the fact that it was going to be Scarfed and it just wasn't, which blew my mind. It blew me away. Um, but it was a really fun game. It's funny to say that the fact that Togekiss missed out on a flinch means that I, I lost the game, especially in a game where I believe Togekiss got like something like five flinches. It flinched the Moltres like two or three times. It flinched the Mikyu. It just got flinches everywhere, right? But all I needed was one additional flinch onto that Genesect in the final minutes of the game. It would have come down to a 50-50 roll, but uh, at that point, that was all I needed to win out the game. And overall, it was just a really, really fun game. And funny enough, at the end of the game, he was confident that he would have taken a second Air Slash. So he would have stayed and it would have all played out the same. It still would have come down to a 50-50 if I just gotten that flinch. It would have been a really cool way to end it, for me at least. I mean, it would have probably not felt great on the other end, but it would have been fun. But for that, that's going to be week one of the UPBA. Uh, it was a ton of fun, like I said. This was played pretty early, but it was still a ton of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UPBA as well as other things to come in the very near future. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again,